become involved in any foreign wars. It became a net exporter of energy and had the highest growth in black and Latin American employment in history. All this despite enduring unending attempts to undermine the presidency of Donald Trump by the Democratic Party and their minions in the media. Now, like him or not, Trump knew that a world where America stood tall and strong would be a safer world. The way he'd respond to incessant nuclear saber rattling from North Korea, for example. We will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for... He brokered unprecedented peace deals in the Middle East, and before his death of a million cuts at the hands of the Mueller report, the Dems and the media, tech censorship and collusion, double impeachment, cities burned to the ground by Antifa mobs, the list goes on and on, Trump held America together in one critical way. He understood the core concept of what keeps this fragile world as stable as it can be. Deterrence. Those who were Bush America ill were cautious of this impetuous Manhattan millionaire who put America and all its people first. He was proud to be an American, as his rally song blared out at every gathering of the deplorables. You know, those flyover state working class Americans, now called MAGA extremists, the white privileged and white rage filled little white boys who come home in coffins at double the rate of the rest of the population when called away to serve. Simple hearted patriots who love their God their country, and their families. Those simple fools who America's current president goads and mocks whenever his mental acuity permits it. Is it any wonder the US is struggling to recruit the soldiers they need to get them out of trouble? But they do say that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And so we see today with Biden's, or should I say Obama's, new vision for an America. An America obsessed not with stature and deterrence, but with faddish and ideological pursuit of diversity, equity and inclusion. An America humbled and humiliated by the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. An America where fuel prices and inflation immiserate the poor and the middle class alike. An America and the West more broadly hurtle smugly towards the frozen misery of net zero. Meanwhile, China fires up a new coal-fired power station at the rate of almost one a week alongside a shiny new solar panel plant next door to sell to their Western buddies. And then they just sit back, crack open a bottle of Sing Tao, smile and count the money. America and the West in general is more divided, inequitable and exclusionary than ever. America and the West in general is different. The strong America of those four years is a place no more. In its place is now Biden's utopia. However, his polling is in the mud, and most commentators, even many on the left, are predicting a red wave come the midterms on November the 8th. Is it any wonder, then, that Vladimir Putin, struggling against the mightily well-funded resistance of the Ukrainian fighters, watching America surrender to itself in virtuous self-loathing, feels he can threaten the use of nuclear weapons with some confidence? that America and a Europe which drinks deep on Russian oil and gas might not have the guts to do anything about it. A terrifying thought for the whole of mankind. Or people kind, as Justin Trudeau calls it.